production of Real Ag is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. It works for everyone. I keep reading about engineered corn, but I don't know what that means. Spring water, purified water, what's the difference? Is imported beef safe for my family? Consumers want to know the facts about the products they buy. That's where Real Ag comes in. From plant to plant and from pasture to plate, Cal Bauer and the Real Ag crew find the facts to help you sort the truth and help you understand Real Ag. Now here's your host, Kyle Bauer. The market for organic foods is increasing, but what makes something organic? And who decides on that definition? The organic option is our topic today on Real Ag. When used in the context of food, organic is a term used to denote products created under a specific set of criteria. No antibiotics used in meat and dairy, um, no genetically modified ingredients. You don't use any poisons or anything toxic to plants or animals, which trickles down to humans, of course. but. Um, um, your fields have to be three years without any toxic substance. Well, the certification rules, and this is a recent rule, that your seed needs to be organic if it's available, which there are seeds, we raise Milo, and Milo's pretty hard to, I mean, there is no organic Milo that I know of, but that, that too will come underway, and as the Seed companies develop and there's profit motive, they'll, they'll be Milo seed. So for now, we're still using regular, regular seed with the exception there can't be any um, treatment on it. In other words, insect poison or something that coats the seed. Organic food has to be certified. There's a lot of criteria that, that falls under. Um, there can't be any pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Organic foods, um, they, that's part of the standard is how much processing goes into the product. Um, even even a, something that has a natural label on it has to be minimally processed. And organics, they have higher standards. You will find pretty much everything that you would find in a conventional freezer, um, conventional store, but um, they are going to be more nutritious, not have any preservatives or additives. The flavor of the product may be different. Um, there's not going to be any MSG, which is going to be in a lot of your conventional products, and which can come under lots of different labels. If something has um, natural flavors on it, that can even mean MSG. So a lot of times people will call the company just to find out. But yeah, the flavor will be different. But that's going to happen from brand to brand anyway. So anything that you could find in your conventional store, there is almost always going to be an organic version of it, such as ice cream or yogurt, milk, eggs. We don't necessarily have um, more products frozen. There are certainly things in the store that would be in the freezer that you may not expect to be in the freezer. Um, but when it comes to shelf life, I think in general, there is a shorter shelf life, but depending on how, it, like if something is canned or in a jar, you know, they obviously can, can keep a little bit longer. But in general, there is a shorter shelf life on organic products. One of the big factors in organic agriculture is the absence of pesticides and herbicides. This creates a series of challenges for farmers. Your main, uh problem as an organic farmer is keeping the weeds out of your row crops. With small grains, we've gone to raisin barley, but the, as far as row crops, the soybeans are, they're a, a, a valuable crop, that's a good cash crop, and um, so we still raise soybeans and we still raise milo because you want to be diversified, but your, your, um, um, the weeds are a problem. They're coming up, they're inventing machinery now that'll take weeds out of the field better. 
There's an outfit out at uh, Colby, Kansas that makes some kind of a weed puller. And uh, I'd like to have one of those. Yeah, and there's flaming. You can flame, kill the weeds when they're just barely sprouting. And of course, we have our cultivators and rotary hoes and tine weeders. And, and it's mainly, it's get it planted, get it up quick and get your cultivation done in a timely manner. And yeah, a lot of it's management. Uh -huh. Because when you quit using toxins, you're, you have the, the beneficial bugs that eat the bugs that eat your crops, and so that all balances out. Now the alfalfa weevil, that's the one insect we can't control. So in the springtime, we just graze the alfalfa. Um, you can take an early cutting, but you're going to lose part of that to the alfalfa weevil, and I presume that's because we don't have birds anymore that eat insects. We don't have the numbers that used to be. Um, plus there's a lot of alfalfa grown around here, so it's been a haven for alfalfa weevil. When it comes to purchasing organic, um, especially produce, um, you know, every region of the country has different crops that will grow there. You know, like we can't grow certain things here in Kansas that they can grow you know, in Chile or Ecuador. So we do have to source um, from different parts of the country or even different countries. Organic produce is, is not going to be as beautiful and shiny as something that you're going to see in a regular supermarket because they don't put wax on it and they don't do a lot of other things. You may have a blemish, but you're getting more vitamins and minerals, so it's worth it. It's not gonna last as long either. When you are purchasing organics, you, you're making the sacrifice of, of something being visually pleasing, knowing that it is more nourishing to your body. Vegetables are not the only organic products. Meat can also be organic. Feed them organic feeds, keep them on organic ground. Um, all ruminant animals now have to be uh, grazed. It's a big percentage, I don't remember what it is, 75, 80%. Maybe more. And then, of course, you have your exception for rain, snow, flood, um, weather. But basically, yeah, an animal should be on, on clean ground all the time. And that's probably one of the hardest parts. Of course, the learning curve is the hardest part, but um, go the first three years, of course, your ground is going through change and you're establishing the microbiology, the, all the animals and plant life that grow through the, under, under the soil. And so the plant life, they, uh, you get that reestablished and, and the cover crops, you learn cover cropping and the no-till people have, have been kind of pioneers in that. Um, the organic people have been doing it, but you, you hear more about the no-till people doing it, but it's a good thing because there should be something growing on the soil all the time because the plant life and the the microbes in the soil need something to eat, and if there's nothing growing, there's the, they they diminish in in numbers, um, and it's just about creating a, a natural. You're trying to mimic Mother Nature, and and you try to create a natural environment as best you can, and and let Mother Nature work with you. And I don't know. We kind of grew up working against Mother Nature, and. We cussed the rain when it got too much, and we cussed the sun when it got too much, and we're learning that, uh, and we cussed the weeds when it got too much, and we're learning that uh, a good biodiversity is the best method, and of course, good rotation. As far as the the packing plants are, uh, they are um, inspected. Organic inspected as well. They have to meet all the regulations, but I don't know. Um, they have to clean up completely if they've done non organic. And so they have to clean up completely and then start the organic hogs or cattle. Because um, I don't, I think they all do 
both organic and both non-organic. Organic foods are available because there's a market for them, but the reasons why people choose organic products are varied. About 50% of our customers come into the store for allergen-free foods, uh, gluten-free, corn-free, soy-free, and the other half are here because of um, to buy organics, whether it be for health reasons or social reasons. Okay. In general, our average customer, I'd say, is someone who is just more concerned with health. I think people are pretty concerned about their health. You know, medical, medical business is not only painful, it's, and nobody likes to be sick, of course, but it's expensive. And maybe it's better to spend a little more money on, on food and, and be healthy, be a healthier society in, in, in all ways. Um, and it's a pretty exciting time we live in, I think, because we're learning things we've forgotten. We're learning things that uh, maybe we never knew about. There are a lot of studies, and there's definitely conflicting studies. Um, I think it's up to people to determine what they believe to be true, um, but it just seems logical. You have healthy soil that is nutrient dense. Of course, something that's growing in that is going to have more vitamins and minerals in it. Yeah, you've got to have a, a supply to develop a market. But yeah, it was, as things come along, you know, everything kind of blends in and, and it becomes more, more demand, more demand, and, and people get excited about it. And, and it's kind of fun to, to see the, everything come into fruition. I think that people are willing to maybe limit their selection if they know that they're getting a superior product. Um, you just kind of have to make sacrifices and say, well, I wanted this, but it's not available, so I'll get this other thing instead. Um, but I'd say in the last 10 years, organics have become so much more popular that there are a lot more options and you can find almost anything really. Definitely an increased popularity in organics. I think a lot of it is because people are educating themselves and are finding out that conventional food can have a whole slew of different ingredients that can be harmful. Um, so I think supply and demand when it comes to bigger grocery stores, they realize that their customers do want organic options, so they've tried to give that to them. And I think everybody's concerned about their food. Um, I mean, there may be a few people that say they're not, but I think they kind of are, and if it tastes better, that's, that's a big plus. Because the old joke is, well, it, it must not be good for me because it tastes good, so I probably shouldn't eat it. Well, that's not really true. Some of the tastes are acquired, but Good food tastes good. It's, I've I've been amazed myself. I've I um, never really you know paid much dis attention till till people got to talking about it. Nearly every organic product is more expensive than its non-organic counterpart. This is due to a variety of factors. Yes, you will always, almost always, pay more for an organic or natural product. Organics especially um, are going to have a higher price tag because it, it costs a lot more to produce an organic product. Um, the price tag on an organic product is the actual cost of fruit, food production. Um, there's a lot more that goes into producing an organic crop because of um, they're not using a cheap chemical pesticide they have to do, um, go through different processes of trying to get rid of their pests or if you are purchasing organic meat, the feed to, to feed an organic cow is about twice as much as you're going to pay for conventional feed. Well, part of it's infrastructure. We don't, you know, we don't have, you know, we ship like when we ship hogs, there's not enough organic farmers, so they're, instead of a semi-load of hogs going, it's a trailer load of hogs. And they process hogs one day a week, and, or maybe one day every two weeks, and do they have a full 
of enough to keep them busy all day long? I don't really know, but a lot of it's infrastructure. Of course, that's all all growing, and that'll that'll help. And and it's a more expensive. You got more labor to more labor and more machinery trips. And maybe at some point, uh, maybe at some point we'll figure out how to do it without so much labor too. But we're definitely going to have to have more farmers to um, produce or, uh, more organic food. With organic farming, you, you're not handling anything toxic. So, you know, for you know, when we started farm, when I started farming, um, I've had hogs since I was 12. And so, you know, the hogs got pretty cheap there for a while, but I've had them since I was 12, so why quit now? I just scale back. And, and so, and this worked out. It's been a good deal. The, um, but the, you know, it's, it's just a good way for kids to start farming. And that's one of the problems is, boy, it's pretty tough for a kid to start farming. And he's got to have a lot of courage to, because if you're buying ground or renting ground, it's, I mean, a college education is expensive, but farming's extremely expensive to get started. But once you get rolling, one thing pays for the next thing, and then it all comes together. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a challenge to get to get kids to farm again. But there so. seems to be a lot of interest out there. Of course, now price all the prices have have got to be a lot more fair. Any product that claims to be organic on the label must be certified using the guidelines set down by the USDA. And there are about a hundred, give or take, um, other certifiers, but they all have to adhere to the same regulations as the USDA. Um, there's a board that figures out the, the rules and regulations. Of course, everybody has input. And God bless the consumers that write in and, and uh, advise you know, suggestions and comments on, on what they should do because you know, there's big corporations that would like to, to make it into a factory-style farming. But I think, I think those, those, those problems are being solved, or I hope so. I, I know they're working on them. Everything that's produced on a farm has to have a paper trail. So when, when the consumer buys something at the grocery store, they can trace that back to whoever, whoever bought or whoever grew it right to the farm it came from. It's good to know where your food comes from. And they talk about putting a face on your food. Well, I guess... I guess that's more comforting, but it, it is, it's, it's good, you know, it's, it's good to know where your food comes from, I think. All of our local suppliers of meat um, don't use antibiotics in their animals. They are not certified organic, but they do go by the same, by the same standards um, that certified organics do, um, even down to the, the processing, the butchering of the meat. We do carry a lot of um, a lot of meat that does come from all over the country um, because it is certified organic. They have to go through a pretty rigorous process to get certified and a lot of smaller farms can't afford the certification. Um, when you purchase something that is locally grown there is no guarantee that it is organic but most likely it will be. There won't be a certification on it because most smaller farms don't have enough um, profit to even go through the organic certification process, um, which is a very, very long, rigorous process. Um, but when you go to your local farmer's market, you can talk to the person who's growing your food and you can ask them about their standards mm -hmm. and you'll find that most of them do go by organic standards but just don't bear the certification. Sometimes food labels can be confusing and consumers may not realize that they're buying something that they don't want. A lot of companies can't put organic on the label if there's certain percentages of organic ingredients that need to be in the product before they can put that on the front of their label. So just because it's not on the front of the label doesn't mean that there aren't organic ingredients in the product. 
but for it to be on the label, it has to be 95%. Otherwise, it will say 100% organic. If it's going to be something that's natural, there has to be minimal processing, uh, no preservatives. Um, a lot of the chemical additives that they put in conventional food, we don't allow in our products. There may be a few things that creep in here and there by customer demand, but um, yeah, we just try and make sure everything is safe. Yeah, we've got um, stuff for vegetarians, vegans, people who have celiac disease or just a gluten intolerance. Um, lots of other food allergies if people are um, lactose intolerant or allergic to soy or corn or um, any other grains. Natural is a very large umbrella. <laughs> um, basically it just is to say that there's no synthetic ingredients added and it's been minimally processed. There is no certification for natural. They can pretty much slap that label on everything, so it's just really important to know your products, know your farms. If it, if it says natural beef, well, basically they're just saying, God made a cow, it's natural. <laughs> we offer um, a lot of different options for as far as dairy and non-dairy milk products. Um, there is almond milk, flax milk, which is new to the market, um, soy milk, um, some of the, I believe it's the almond milks have um, casein in them, which is from dairy, so that would be something that a vegan wouldn't consume. If something is labeled vegetarian, that does not necessarily mean that it is organic, not by any means. There are a lot of vegetarian products that have no organic ingredients in them whatsoever. Um, something that's vegan will also be the same. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's organic. Um, what vegan is is just something that's 100% animal product free. Whereas a vegetarian, um, there's several different kinds of vegetarians, but some choose not to consume dairy. Some choose not to consume eggs and all of that. So but a lot of the vegetarian products will still have um, some dairy in them. Um, and then organic, you can have a vegan product or a vegetarian product that is organic, or like I said before, it can be have no organic ingredients whatsoever in it. An organic egg comes from a chicken that has been given organic feed. Um, they haven't been injected with any sort of antibiotics or growth hormones or anything of that sort. Um, just because an egg is brown does not mean that it is an organic egg. Um, you can get a brown egg from any sort of chicken if it's brown. <laughs> when you're purchasing an organic egg, you'll know that the chicken itself, they have to be given at least a little bit of free roaming space. They've been given organic feed. Um, they haven't been injected with any antibiotics or growth hormones, um, and so you know that when they produce an egg, it's going to be pure and clean and organic. The grains that they eat do also have to be certified organic. Free range does not mean organic. It just means that the chickens were able to do a little running around outside. When it comes to purchasing products, it, re it really is extremely important that you, you educate yourself, that you know what things to look for um, in certain products. Also when it comes to dietary restrictions, even when it comes to gluten-free customers, there can be baking soda that has some form of gluten in it. And unless you know what you're looking for, you could end up purchasing something that could make you sick. That wraps up this episode of Real Ag. We hope that the information presented here helps you at the grocery store. On behalf of the Real Ag crew, I'm Kyle Bauer, helping you sort the truth and helping you understand Real Ag. Production of Real Ag is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. It works for everyone.